Hi everyone, Evan Alexander here with another Vectorworks 3D Basics tutorial. Today we're going to talk about sweeping, which has nothing to do with housework. Um, some, some software calls this function lathing. Maybe you've heard that if you've worked with other software. Um, in Vectorworks, it's called a sweep. And here's how it works. I am in Vectorworks 2019. I'm going to grab the polyline tool and I'm going to switch into front view. Uh, a lot of the other stuff we've done in tutorials has been in top plan view where you've drawn and kind of pulled up. This is more about drawing half of a profile from the front and then uh, using that profile to sweep or lathe itself into a 3D solid. So what does that mean? First thing I'm going to do is draw a line. Uh, just because I want to have a nice straight vertical edge to rotate around so I don't get any anomalies or overlapping geometry. Let's start uh, with a martini glass because, you know, why not? It seems like a good place to start. I, I will build for you the world's worst martini glass uh, just to show you how this works. So I've grabbed the polyline tool. I'm not paying attention to scale here, uh, which you know obviously you should if you're designing something. But uh, you know we're just gonna fake it here and kind of show you how it is. I'm using the polyline tool, as I said. Um, I've got a tutorial in the future where I'll talk more about this tool. Uh, it seems to be a bit of a mystery for people how to draw straight and curved segments together. So here we go. So we have our kind of profile, half a martini glass. Um, you know, maybe from the Jetsons. Um, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this. I'm going to say model sweep. And a dialog box is going to pop up with a whole bunch of options. Let's not worry about any of them right now. We'll come back. The important thing to know is that we are going to sweep a full 360 degrees. And I'm just going to say OK. And you'll see that right away what we get here is this nice kind of, um, I don't know, what martini glass from the future or, you know, maybe like 1960s furniture. Um, so, so that's great. And, and like all the other things that we've been working on in our tutorials here, this is a parametric object. So if you need to update or modify this, you know, profile at all, just double click on this and this will take you right back to the original 2D geometry. And uh, so I can double click on this with the reshape tool and I can come in here and you know now I can kind of fine tune these profiles or you know even add, why don't we add like a little kind of like round bubble detail here. And we'll add surface so that this is all together. You can see it's already kind of giving me a little preview here. And, uh, and so we will uh, exit the sweep profile and now it's updated. So that's great. We love it when things are parametric. Let's just jump back in here one more time. So you can see that what happens is it always uses the left side as its uh, pivot, as its axes to revolve around. So one, you wanna always draw your profile kind of to the right, but also, Again, really important that this be straight up and down because otherwise, if this is you know angled, you'll either end up with kind of a tapered hole or if it's going the other way, uh, the geometry will actually overlap into itself and things will just get weird quick. So um, better to be you know kind of nice and you know and clean. If you if you've drawn it, and things are, you know, slightly out of whack. Um, you know, there's a few ways you can fix it, but uh, one thing that I like to do is just grab a rectangle and just clip surface here, uh, and just make sure that that is, you know, nice and straight. And uh, and then you can exit the profile. I, I should note that where this profile is in relation to kind of the axes of the world does not matter. It's only going to revolve around itself. So wherever you draw it, that doesn't really matter. I'm going to exit. Now, one thing you may notice is that, you know, in theory, this red line is like zero. So this is the ground. 
So technically speaking, this, you know, uh, 44 foot tall martini glass is sunk into the ground. Because when I drew the front view, I really just ignored kind of where the world was. And, you know, that's okay. We can fix that. The way I like to fix this really easily is go into top plan view. And I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm just going to draw a big rectangle. And I'm going to hit Command E to extrude. But I'm going to extrude it to zero inches. Yeah, you can do that. And so what that does is it kind of creates this like virtual like piece of paper, I guess you could say. It doesn't have any thickness, but it shows up as a 3D object. So now if I go into front view here, I can see uh, I could. Well, I have something to snap to at least. So boink. now I can make sure that this is actually sitting on the ground uh, or on the stage or on the table or, you know, whatever it is that you're you're working on so that's great so we love this okay so sweeping is great for bottles things like that just know that when you make these objects um, that they are considered to be solids by vectorworks and so what does that mean let's say we were going to make a wine bottle here uh, or maybe a gin or vodka bottle to go with our martini and uh, we're just going to do this really kind of quick and really dirty bring it back around great again the world's worst uh, 87 foot tall bottle um, so now I'm gonna we don't need the line anymore we'll do that all again model sweep default Okay, so the thing to know is that according to Vectorworks, this is a solid object. So um, if you were to say put a glass texture on this and then you know shine a light on it, you, you know either in Renderworks or in another piece of 3D software, it, it's going to treat this like a crystal ball. <laughs> it's like totally solid. So if you want it hollow. What you really need to do is you really need to be drawing, uh, you know, an actual kind of side, like wall thickness, I guess is what I'm saying, wall thickness. We can kind of fix this here uh, down and dirty a little bit, but uh, why don't we grab the offset tool? I'm going to choose a weird value here only because <laughs> my bottle is, you know, 17 inches wide. So if I offset this, you know, just a little bit here, so, uh, you know, Please work to scale, people work to scale. But I've offset this. I'm going to double click this and I'm going to drag this over. And uh, I'm going to double click again and I'm going to drag this up. And then I'm going to just clip surface. So let's say clip surface and get rid of that. And so now what I've drawn is, you know, and again, I'm still kind of straight up and down based on this center point. Now I have some actual thickness, and so now what we have here is really like a hollow vessel, okay? So just be aware that you have to kind of uh, work that out. There's another way that you could fix this. If I undo here and just get rid of this whole process, go back, and let's exit. So this is a solid piece here, kind of bouncing around today a little bit. Uh, if we go to the 3D tools, there is one in here called Shell Solid. And what this is going to do is this is going to let you set a wall thickness. 12 was pretty good on this one. You have to pick kind of the opening where it's going to make the hole. So we want to do that at the top. And then when you run the command, there you go. It's going to basically do the same thing and hollow that out, which is pretty swell. So there you go. Bonus tip on sweeping. All right, so, and this is sitting kind of low, so we'll, here we go, the world's largest cocktail table. Um, all right, let's see here. Let's, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to grab this profile. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to exit so that, uh, see what I did there? I stole that profile right out of there so I don't have to draw another one. Oops. Let's say paste and 
there we go put it in screen mode as I've said in the other tutorials we have to talk about layer plane and screen plane a little bit in a separate tutorial but here I am I'm still in front view I've got this nice profile I'm gonna say model sweep again now what is all this stuff so start and arc angle are pretty self-explanatory um, you can you know do less than 360 degrees so if you know if you're doing like a I don't know like a, a gothic detail that's kind of sunk into the wall you could rotate it 180 degrees start is just basically where is it going to begin so i wouldn't worry about that too much segment angle though is an interesting one and uh and by default mine is this really weird 5.62 and yours may be different and i'll explain why but basically what's happening is um, when you're sweeping something what vectorworks does is it takes this profile and then it duplicates it and it rotates it around and, uh, and then it duplicates it and it rotates it around and it duplicates and rotates it around. And then it takes all those profiles and it connects the vertices. And that's how it kind of spins the 2D into the 3D. So the segment angle is what tells Vectorworks how many de degrees to rotate before it drops another profile. So the lower this value the kind of higher the resolution uh, your object will be. Um, and you can kind of use this to your advantage here. Let's do an extreme example so you can see. If I were to say, make this into uh, segments of 30, um, you can see that as we come around here, uh, now all of a sudden, see how faceted it is? Because this is 30 degrees in between each one. And there's just not enough information in there for Vectorworks to kind of smooth it out. You can see here in the Object Info Palette, you can go back and adjust these after you've kind of made it a little bit. So, you know, if I take this to 20, you'll see it's going to get a little bit better. Uh, you know, 5. 5 is pretty much my default and where it's at. Um, I've, I've had good luck with this. Um, I have, you know, sometimes gone down really low when I'm specifically trying to make faceted objects like this, um, you know, maybe a vase or something, a tent, anything. So, um, so you know, you can use that to your advantage, but uh, five usually is kind of a good spot. So let's undo here, let's get back to this, and I'm gonna say uh, model sweep, so this is all messed up, but I think originally, what was it, 5.62, right? So how did we land on that, you know, kind of wacky number? Well, if we go to our Vectorworks preferences under 3D, we have what's called the 3D conversion resolution. Worth noting that this is different than the OpenGL kind of low, medium, high settings for display. This is really about how are the objects built. So. With this set to medium, uh, it chooses 5.62. Uh, if I were to set this to say very high and say okay, and now let's see if it's gonna do it or if it's just gonna leave the uh, old value in there. Yeah, it left the old value in there. Sorry to say, it remembers what you did last, but, um, but depending on what your 3D resolution is set at, that's going to affect this uh, default setting. I will say that for years now, I've just set this to five and said, okay, and everything's been swell. So I have no complaints. Um, and I think, you know, I think you're probably fine with that. So um, probably more than you want to know. Uh, there's one other function in here, which can be kind of useful and that's pitch. And so basically what pitch is in inches here is, as it revolves around whatever value you put in here that's how much it's going to rise as it goes up so you can start to um, you know corkscrew different things as it kind of goes up um, oh, i didn't like that very much 20 feet a sweep with a pitch must be swept around a locus yeah okay wow well that's a great segue into uh, our next piece it 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 did it though, um, it looks really weird. So, um, you know, I've used this before for like handrails for uh, curving staircases, um, you know, that were solid. 
Um, but it's not very helpful and uh, I don't know, I don't use it very much. So let's just see here. Now we've broken Vectorworks. Oh yeah, we did break Vectorworks. Cool, goodbye. Um, so, all right, we've made martini glasses. We've made bad pitched martini glasses. What if you're trying to do something that's more kind of donut-y in origin than the martini glass, right? I said you have to have this kind of straight up and down line. Um, but imagine we were going to build like a, a poof, right? Like a piece of uh, furniture that has maybe a um, like a center, like a hole in the center where there's like a big floral vase, right? Uh, for you non-set designers or architects out there, poof is just, you know, like a round kind of circular bench, like a Victorian piece of furniture. Here's a really awful profile of one. And so if I, if I sweep this now, right, what's going to happen is it's just going to sweep onto itself. And, you know, that's okay. Um, but this is kind of tall and skinny, you know, almost like a perfume bottle. Uh, and that's not exactly what I want. I really, I really want, you know, like a two foot hole up here so I can put a floral in it and, you know, make the whole kind of thing bigger. So let's undo this. So as I said before, it always rotates off of the left hand side. So what you can do is you can add a 2D locus. I'm just going to drop one right here. And uh, a 2D locus is, it's not a real object, it's really just a point in space. It's just, uh, you know, mathematical coordinates for vector works to kind of understand. Um, so if I select both of these, it now thinks that the leftmost part of our profile is where the locus is. And so this space here is going to be, you know, kind of open air when we sweep it. So let's say model sweep. And as this comes around, you can see that it's done exactly what we wanted here, which is that it has left this kind of opening in the center. So that's great because, you know, that also opens up kind of a whole world of possibilities for other objects that you can make. Um, now, uh, let's go in here and I just double clicked on it. So I said before, like, oh, I think we probably want a two foot opening in there so you have to you know kind of put this locus in the right spot where you want it because uh, I just made it up so let's grab this locus here let's see if it's gonna let me pick it up I'm gonna move it over onto this and now I'm just gonna hit command M so we want two feet but we're really you know we're dealing with radius here not diameter so I'm gonna say minus 12 inches and that's just gonna move it over 12. I keep forgetting that I'm working on this massive scale. So <laughs> let's undo that. Let's say, okay, let's move this over uh, eight feet. We're apparently building furniture for giants today, everybody. Um, and so now, right, basically what I'm getting at is by controlling this distance, you are actually controlling what this, you know, kind of opening and aperture is. So you can really, you know, hit the money kind of where you, where you want it. So that's great. Knowing that you can work this way, um, you can use sweeps uh, sometimes for kind of large architectural gestures. Um, I, I built a train station once that had all these, had a barrel vaulted ceiling with all this kind of curving molding running around it. And at first I was doing extrude along path and you know that was working kind of okay, but with the sweep, and being able to kind of dial in my segment angle, I'm able to really kind of refine how much, uh, you know, how kind of fine the curvature is on that. So, uh, so I have done things like this before where, you know, I'll draw a profile of molding and then, you know, 20 feet away, put a locus. And then when you sweep 180 degrees, you get this big, you know, kind of arc of, uh, of, uh, of architecture. So that's, that's great. Um, yeah, I think that's sweep kind of in a, in a nutshell. Um, I, I don't use this as often as extrude or extrude along path, but it is really great for making, um, you know, things like, you know, bottles and 
um, you know, spires and kind of towers and sphere and I don't know, any of those kind of, uh, kind of details for these round objects that would be, you know, much harder to kind of model in a, in a more straightforward kind of way. So I think that really kind of covers us on sweep. So I hope that's helpful. Please check out the, uh, the Extrude and the Extrude Along Path videos if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you want more. I'm going to keep making more of these, some quick tips. And uh, eventually we'll get into more advanced and intermediate tutorials for kind of larger workflow stuff. But this is just uh, a good place to get started if you're just making the transition into 3D. All right. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you soon.